What up, party people? How's it going? Happy live streaming day. Are we getting some audio? We are. Okay. Looks like we're good to go. Hey, I'm Adam. I draw floor plans. Thanks for being here. Um, today, I'm going to draw a floor plan for you live right in front of your faces. Um, what am I going to draw? Great question. I'm going to draw something like this ranch plan. So this is the exact same parameters as my last live stream. But what I want to do is um, show you, walk you through how changing one core component really affects the whole floor plan. So we're still going to have a ranch plan, still going to be three beds, hopefully plus an office. We'll see two and a half baths. Uh, transitional exterior, 64 feet wide side load garage. So that's the anchor, 64 feet wide, three car. I didn't write that there, but three car side load garage. That's the anchor that I need to structure all this all around. What I did last time, I'll show you when we get to the CAD, but what I did last time was put the entry right next to the garage. So then all the bedrooms ended up being on one side of the house. Well, I'm gonna put the office next to the garage or, or a bedroom and then move the entry to more of like the center area of the home and it's gonna cascade to a lot of changes. Um, I think the the kitchen will change as well. I'm gonna to toy with that too. So um, yeah, we're gonna play with it. I'm gonna try and be in like the 24 to 2800 square foot range, but I'm not too picky on square footage for right now. So, I mean, sometimes you are, sometimes you really, really have to be with a client. Like if they, especially if you're talking to a builder and the builder knows like, hey, in this square footage range, it's gonna be this price based on my features and all that. Um, so sometimes design is really constrained to the square footage, um, but this isn't quite yet. I really want like a, a great plan and not necessarily to hit an exact square feet number. All right, let me shuffle some windows and I'll show you what we did last time. Um, oh, and I'm gonna try and do all this under an hour too. So let's get that clock app up. Throw that in the corner. And I can start to share this with you. Okay, so this is what I did last time. As you can see here, three car side load garage is right there. This is the garage. Caps lock, always on. Um, yeah, three car side load garage in this entryway. Um, the purple line is showing the centering of the entryway and the great room and everything. So entryway next to the garage, but I'm actually gonna kick that more to the middle of the house and slide the kitchen and dining and great room over. And we're gonna see what that does to the plan. So it's probably gonna change a lot actually. So all we're gonna copy this time is the garage. And then I'm gonna make sure I have 64 feet to work with. So this is my building pad. Um, and then I'm gonna start, let's just come 12 feet back with this right there. And we'll go from there. So 12 feet back for that front wall of the house. And before starting, let's see here. So if we did like 12 and 12 for rooms there, then we could do, give each of these a foot more actually. You know, if you're thinking room on this side and then room on this side with a foyer in the middle. Um, yeah, you got plenty of room for that. Um, let's start on the back here though, this great room. Um, 18 feet. Where does that come to? Okay. And then maybe let's go like 13 feet for that dining area. And then another 13 feet for the kitchen. And then we'll go 18 feet front to back. This might be a slab on grade plan. So I'm not super with trusses above. So I'm not super worried about um, spans here because trusses above slab on grade means um, a lot of this stuff gets really easy. I might show a staircase. The last one I did show a staircase, but we figured this could be a mechanical area. Um, oh, I forgot to start the timer. <laughs> cool, cool. Got it. All right. Um, so let's label some of this stuff 
as we're coming in. And already you can see it's going to start to be a really different plan. So let's say this is kitchen. This is dining. And this is great room. Wonder if that comes in a little bit there. Oh, I deleted the wrong thing. Delete that and that and that. And then bring that out like another foot. Okay, and then I wanted I'm wondering here if we can do the foyer centered on that dining this time. So yeah, let's copy a line in there. So this will be our core center line of that front door. Looking straight at the dining table as you walk in. Could be nice and elegant. I've seen some cool plans with something like that in there. Okay, now the trick will be, so we're not throwing away square footage, I'm just looking down the road already how to get beds, baths, and an office in here without them all being over top of each other. Because this area is not wide enough to do two bedrooms side by side. So we're gonna need to do like front to back and maybe pull that forward. I don't know, we'll see. Primary bath, I'm thinking. <laughs> primary bath, primary bedroom, I'm thinking. Let's start with that one first. We'll be behind the kitchen. Um, looking at this now, probably want to pull the garage forward so that we can have a hallway or something in here. Oh, that's a street cleaner. I thought that was in my music. I don't know if you can hear that. I have the windows open, so street cleaner just rode by. <laughs> and I'm like, this is a vicious swell for this kind of song. Um, but it's not. Have no fear. Fine, just cleaning the streets here in the lovely city of Valparaiso, Indiana. Okay, so I got a little, little hallway here. Um, I'll work on that later. Then our primary suite here, that could even be bumped off the back. This could even be bumped out more too, if need be. You know, if you really want to go bigger with it. Um, but uh, the area I'm most concerned about, because I think these will all work. I can, I'm can. i thinking this will be laundry, mudroom, pantry area. I'm a little bit concerned, though, about our bedroom space. So first I want to do a buffer. This is a five-foot buffer. Um, and that's a great space for walk-in closets, bathrooms, even if you want to do mechanicals, like I can fit a lot in that. And then I can start my first bedroom from the front there. So that's 13 feet out. And then let's do 12 by 13 for this room. Just see where that gets us. Okay. So I'm already, I can already tell this other bedroom it's going to need to be in front of that. Let's do 13 by 12 for this one as well. Delete that wall for now. Okay, and you probably have this common arrangement where you're doing dual walk-ins up in this front corner here, which I think really works. Um, and then you probably do front porch there. I think I'm going to need a little more area for that office if I want to do an office there or anything though. All right, let's think about this coffee break. Let me throw some dimensions on here for you and we'll measure our floor plan on coffee breaking. Oh. 
on there? Yeah, I am. Okay. Okay. We are 2336 right now, so still on the small side. So I got a lot of room to play with here. I could even pull that garage forward. This garage inside to inside, 31 by 236. I could make that slightly bigger and still feel good about it. Okay. All right, so then I'm thinking this is bath area. This is bedroom two. This is bedroom three. So if we are to do a staircase down, wondering if that goes right here. Straight shot, stare down. Treads coming down this way. Mm, yeah, it's not gonna work. I'm not gonna have enough room to get into that space there. All right, let's see here about our primary suite. Okay, so I do have room. That was 13 feet that I just bumped off there. Bumped off, not the technical term. Let's show an island in this kitchen. All right, so I'm working through what I should do for the pantry space. And I'm kind of thinking it should be back here. We could even do dual entry, which could be kind of cool. I have a 48 inch offset, so I can really cut that down slightly going into those pantry spaces. And maybe there's a little Nice little linen or something tucked there. As you're coming back to that primary suite. Although, I think I'm going to need to put it... Yeah, let's think through this. Because the other thing I could do with the pantry is put it like here on the edge of that kitchen. I think there are some that would certainly like if that was nice and secluded, their main bedroom. But on the flip side, there's a lot of space to get over there. All right, let's copy this over. Just gonna play with an idea here. So, idea I had. So, what if we just kick the master off the back here? Oh goodness, wrong buttons. Sorry, gang. I'm failing you. You know, I'm joking when I say stuff like that. Like, I don't really feel like I'm failing. Okay, so adding a couple hundred square feet, but we're still well within our target range. And then so
All right, this is just an idea. Nobody freak out. Okay, but then we got bath. And then a walk in here. And I would maybe sneak a little door in here so that it's closer to like the mudroom, mudroom laundry area if you wanted to like have some circulation there. This door will come down. This is kind of a slender bath though. Let's see here, do we have room for components on both sides? Mm, not really. Yeah, not enough walkway space. Maybe we need to take some from the pantry. Oh yeah, we can take a lot from the pantry. Okay. Alrighty. Yeah, I don't... I think this could end up being some cool layouts and stuff here, but I think we're really throwing away a lot of square footage to get back there. I wonder if there's a better way to get back to the primary suite. The other thought I had is what if we, what if our extra room was like a sunroom or a keeping room or something off the back here? Coming back here. That gets deleted. And that's pantry space. Or like a hearth room. It's a fun buzzword, right? And then your hall to the primary suite is there. Still not a ton of space for it. Maybe all this is that. Okay. Really chopped into a kitchen, but... Got some cool stuff here. Let me drag that forward. And put the laundry right in there. And that's our closet. I still need to figure out stairs, don't I? What if the stairs are our buffer? We'll come back for you, Bath. I'm just counting stairs here. Oh yeah, that's enough treads. Okay, maybe that's a walk-in on the upstairs side. Or some sort of closet. Where do we put the bath then? I mean, that's enough room for the bath, but then we don't have hallway space to get back to our bedrooms. I guess the front door could come out some. And then bath could go in that corner. Right there. Okay. I can see marinating a chicken in that. Are you working with a size constraint? 
Jeff says. Yeah, kind of. So I wanted to be between 24 and 28. Um, Jeff is an awesome architect, by the way. Um, yeah, I wanted to be between 24 and 28 somewhere. And I added a lot here as I bumped that out. So I'm right at 28 now. 2796 on that main floor. I have some room here. I could cut some of the fluff. I wanted to pull that back a little bit. And then I could pull this back as well. That doesn't need to be quite as big. But, yeah. Let's see here. I'm spending a lot of space in this foyer too, but I think it's going to be cool. All right, what's the size of our primary suite? 17.6 by 17.6. It doesn't need to be that big. That's really big. Let's pull this back a couple feet. Okay. And then let's bring this across. We can do some sort of built-ins or something on one of those sides. Is this centered? Yeah, it is centered. Okay. Oh, maybe let's pull the kitchen over. Maybe this is our range while the sink goes on the island. I'll put fridge there and pantry there. Okay, so kitchen. Heath. <laughs> Heath bar. Hearth room. Okay. Oh. Pantry. There we go. Okay, and then this would be laundry. Oh, also on the size constraint, I am working with a max 64 feet wide. So I want to stick with that if I can. So this could be our primary. Oh, we got a good amount of space now for... Um, Walk-in and all that jazz in our bath. We could probably do something cool in there. Yeah. Oh, you got room for a wet room if you want. You wanna? Wet room? Yay, nay. I feel like I'm getting a lot of requests for wet rooms lately. So I'm gonna show it. I wanna make that nice and wide. So six foot three, like to the glass. Probably six two to the glass, realistically. Um, which is big enough to get like a 66 inch tub. I don't wanna go too much more though and make that other side tight. So maybe this is either a giant walk-in shower or a wet room. It's a giant walk-in sh shower, small wet room, but you get the option. Okay, this island, six foot by four, six. I can come all the way out to there with it. I wanna pull that back. So I wanna make sure these hard corners here, there's plenty of space between them. Uh, six foot one is a good dimension. Um, hard corners are where you kids bang their heads and you bang your fingers when you're carrying a laundry basket and stuff. Like I really want to avoid those spaces being tight at all if I can. All right, so, yeah, we could show like a cool covered patio or porch there too. Um, yeah, okay, it's it's starting to take some shape. Uh, primary bath, or pee bath for short. Is laundry good enough size? 10.8 by 7.2, that is a good size. It's also good enough to put like appliances and stuff on 
both ends, which is fun. Okay. So I don't have an office, but if you do get an extra room with this hearth room on the main that I think people will appreciate. You could even do a plan option here where you bump this back just a couple more feet, and then you can wall that off with like French doors or something if you wanted to and turn the kitchen back the other way. I like the idea of some form of headers or something. Kind of partitioning off this dining. Make it feel like its own its own room, its own space. I'm a big fan of separation of space. Open floor plans are cool, but I like to define areas if I can. So I'm always leaning that direction. So those will be a couple little walls and I can pull this door back. So, oh no, I can't. That was for our bath. All right, let's work on the bedrooms over here. I could leave this closet for the great room side. Maybe a little weird, but um, it's a nice like game closet. I don't know. I know not everybody is board gamers, <laughs> but we have a ton of board games and they take up a lot of space. It's nice to have them by the family area. All right, gotta get this mud room figured out too. Ooh, though, you know what this does? This makes the walk into the kitchen kind of awkward. Maybe we turn the island back. Facing the dining. And then just stretch this six inches. That. The primary bed's still a good size. 16.6 by 14.8. Yeah, I like that more. This kitchen island is seven feet, four foot six by seven feet. We actually do need to make that a little bigger. I'm gonna make this whole thing a foot deeper. Cause I can pull this back and pull some square footage back there. i make this a walk-in closet for that. Yeah, let's do that. Let's do walk-in for the bedroom. I'm gonna give up my game closet. And then you can do little built-ins on the side of the bedroom here. Goodness, I keep doing the buttons in the wrong order. Okay. So we got walk-in here. And we got walk-in there for bedroom three. Those bedrooms aren't bad size either. Oh, 11, 6 by 12, 6. No, it's not huge. And 12, 3. I think it's 12 by 13. Yeah. All right, let's check our square footage again. Where was I at? Let's see here. Also, coffee break. Twenty-seven sixty-two. Okay, so I did actually take a little square footage out. Um. Oh, yeah. I forgot. One reason I flipped the island here was so that I could walk into the kitchen at like a nice, normal space. So it's not into you're like you're not walking right into the island or anything. Ah, uh, that's not laundry. That's mudroom. Sorry. You might even have a, a little bit of a room to do a pocket office here or a giant. I'm a huge, huge fan of the mudroom coat closet. I'm gonna make that a foot bigger. Um, the mudroom walk-in closet, I should say. Um, we have one in our house now and it's awesome. Um, you just have, especially for those of you that live 
in northern climates where you see a real winter and if you have kids or dog like there's just so much stuff that you get <laughs> and it's nice to have a place to put it okay oh that bath is going to be tight isn't it What if that's like a powder bath though? And there's a Jack and Jill on this side of the house. So I can pull this square footage back. Showing 48 inch halls here. You could do a linen closet there. Yeah, and then you could do Jack and Jill over here. I don't know where closet goes for bedroom three, though. Maybe this is closet. That's a pretty small closet, though. For that size of room. What are we at square footage-wise? Twenty-eight oh two. Okay, so we're right at our the upper bounds. We did make all this pretty big though. Guess I could squeeze that some. Let's see here, four foot eight to the corner of that wall from the island. I think that's still okay. Uh, the reason I was playing with square footage there is I really want to figure out a way to get both a Jack and Jill bath in here and a walk-in closet. Oops. Let's see here. So what if I take this back... that many. Oh, that's not going to be enough for a Jack and Jill. So I was thinking walk in there and Jack and Jill here, but that would be tight. I'm going to grab some components to show you. I do like that the bath would be off the face of the house, though. That's nice. Makes it easier for elevations and stuff. And nobody really wants their family on a front window if they can afford it. Yeah, we're close. We're close to getting a bath that works in here. As far as this setback. Right, first, we need to clean that up. And maybe let's go. What is that? I don't at least want to be a foot. That was only six inches of offset. So I made it a full 12. Four foot six for that closet. It's on the smallish side. Oh, uh, no, I can make that a full five. I think. Let's see here, we got room for that toilet. Hmm, two foot eleven. It's on the side side, but doable. Okay, so shared bath between the kids' bedrooms. Oh, I actually do have a little more width because that doesn't need to be a two by six wall there. Pull it back. Alrighty. Bingo, bingo. Walk in there, walk in there. Bedroom two. Uh, this can be powder. So then... Alright. Vote for me. 
Would you want this as a uh, pocket office or walk in? Throw your comments in the comments. You're not YouTube, new to YouTube. You know how this works. Okay, that could be... Oh, that'd be an awesome set of lockers or something. You got room for a closet here. Your mudroom going into the laundry. And we'll, we'll do a door from the laundry into the walk-in. So the walk-in could have two doors there. Like I said, wet room, toilet compartment there. Actually, probably could make that toilet compartment a lot smaller. Yeah. A lot, a lot smaller. Then do like linen closets on each side of this massive vanity. You could do a fireplace and then with built-ins on the side, either for the hearth room or the primary. It's up to you. Jeff votes for walk-in. Okay. It's one vote for walk-in. I'm kind of feeling that too. That would be a sick walk-in. Because it is, it, it's a little, it's 11, six by seven feet. Um, let's see here. You could pull some of this back here too. These stairs going down. And maybe make this like a, just a little sliver of open rail before you get to that wall. Gotta keep it open. If you wanted to, you could open that all up and do full open rail. I, again, I like to separate the spaces. You could do a vaulted great room or something off the back there. Okay, cool. I think we're close enough where I could start to model this in 3D. I got 30 minutes. Goal is to get you something in SketchUp. That. Sorry, let me swap screens here for a second. Hey. Just so I can hide some of these files of clients' projects that I'm actively working on. Alrighty. Let's jump back. Hey, sup? How you been? Um, like the big drop-off area too. Jeff says, "Oh yeah, this could be all drop zone, or this could be built-in lockers, and this could be a drop zone." Hmm. Yeah, this being a walk-in does give you a lot more flexibility in that mudroom, for sure. All right. Now I'm gonna make a AutoCAD file that has just the footprint in SketchUp. Um, sorry, screen sharing. Um, just need to open this. Okay, cool. Hey, I'm back. Okay, so I make this AutoCAD file so I can import something really nice and clean into SketchUp and make my life easy. Um, there's a double line there. We don't need that mess. Okay. And one last time for the screen sharing. Nope. Not open. And we want import. Oh, we're good. Okay. And then, oh, I forgot to draw this, but it'll be the covered porch off the back here. All right. Let's get to modeling. Oh. I want to explode this. That's why nothing was happening there. There we go. All right, and then let's check out our plate heights. So top of plate, probably gonna do 10 foot walls on this 11, 11 and a quarter. Again, I'm showing the basement version. We don't have to show the basement version, but this might end up being slab on grade. I don't know. Um, I'm going to show 
12 inch offset for those eaves. Typically the eaves actually come down from the top of plate. So I'm gonna push those down. The top of eave is roughly, very roughly. Um, this isn't true 100% of the time, but usually around the um, top of eave is around the top of plate. So if you're wondering, redrawing these starting out. It varies based on like the pitch and the type of roof, but that's what, that's what you usually get. Okay, so let's make our porch eave there. All right, I'm gonna do, um, is that a 12 inch offset? No, that's straight up, isn't it? Okay, yeah. I'm gonna come out 12. Okay, I'm gonna do the main part of the roof on the back wall of the great wall the back wall of the great room because uh, we'll probably have a covered porch off the back there like I said which will just be gabled off the back but I'm not going to model the covered porch I'm just trying to get a front elevation here for you so 812 pitch front to back and then I got the midpoint there that I can just snap to Sketchup in this phase is really fun, fast and breezy. Okay. Now, what to do with the, so we'll have the garage doors on this side. So we could have that face of the garage there. Although I feel like I did that last time. I'm going to pull up my old YouTube video on my other screen here. Yeah, I did do just like a little bump out area there. Maybe I'll keep the garage face flat across and do something different. All right, let's go over here. We will have a little bit of a similar elevation though to this one, even though the floor plan was completely different. Um, I'm really trying to hit a specific style. I mean, I would vary up the styles a lot more with these lives, but I'm trying to hit a specific style with this one. Um, give some more options based on the floor plan. Cause I know I have an idea of where I want this to go. And I know that this like transitional style is kind of what the what the fit is for this. So I'm really sticking with that. Sorry for hoping for something else. But hey, you clicked on the thumbnail. If you got here, clicked on the thumbnail and you saw that transitional image. So I feel like I'm fine. <laughs> you know, I've been watching a lot of how-tos on YouTube and it's all like, Pay off the thumbnail. This is me paying off the thumbnail. The transitional house. You're welcome, America. Okay. We'll do eight inch eaves here as well. Um, if you've watched any of my other lives, you've heard me say this, but this is the time, and this is why I like modeling and SketchUp. Like, we are 40 minutes into this brand new, never done before design. You should have a really good feel by now if you are making, are you working toward an attractive house or you got to change some stuff. And right now, I feel like the form is pretty good. As I'm starting to model this, I can tell, you know, you take a step back, like, you really can't, these things are hard to change, you know, so. I'm probably gonna put a dormer here in the middle. Maybe a nice long slender shed dormer, like in the feel of that for this house. Um, and so, yeah, lost my train of thought. But um, you, should have, you should start to have a feel for your house by this stage. This is why I love working in these programs because it's very easy to get to this point. Like I said, we're only 40 minutes in. Um, 
So if we fail on this one, and not all of these lives have turned out perfect. I'm not gonna lie. Oh wait, let's see here. Maybe 10 feet wide for that dormer. I don't wanna go up that tall. Now I'm just playing with dimensions that I know work or have worked in the past. Oh, maybe slightly wider with it actually. That's a 12 footer. Pull on each side out another foot. Oops. If you hit K, it shows all the lines in the project, even the ones hidden behind your view. I'm always hitting it when I'm not supposed to be. Okay. Now, I'm going to do a little 412 shed on that dormer. Shed roof on our shed dormer. Hmm. I feel like that needs to slide up the roof a little bit, doesn't it? kind of arbitrary but and then do like a five bank of windows across there let's get some grids in these windows to be shorter. Okay. I think that could work. Now, let's see. So the last time I did a little bump out shed here, which actually like, <laughs> I still feel like kind of works, but I'm not gonna do that. We're gonna try and, and do something different. Try and mix it up a little bit. So I'm gonna play with this front of the garage bay here. Maybe this is like, I've been looking at a lot of like Frasier home designs and stuff. Love that guy. He's an awesome designer. Um, so this is inspired by him. Uh, Tony, I think his name is, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, then we can do a little. Little hip like this coming back with some metal roof to match the metal roof on our dormer there. We got 15 minutes left. We'll get close ish to something that'll look like something. All we're going for here. Close ish. Oh, I didn't do that line right. That would have been a nightmare. Alright. 
now let's put some windows on this. Um, we're gonna make that one unique. Make it two feet taller. Then we're gonna make this one a foot shorter. Oops. Oh no wait, I just edited all those. Constantly doing that. Gotta make it unique. Now we're gonna make it a foot shorter. This one should be. Oh, that's not right. I'm trying to copy grids around. This is why. This is why you come to these, isn't it? Be honest. You're like, man, that guy's got grid lines down in Windows. He's a real, he's a real grid savant. Okay, that feels a little bit more right. Uh, these should be shorter too. More writer. up a little bit. Oh, I grabbed too many things. Sometimes if you grab a wall behind, you can do it really easily without being able to tell that you did it. And then it'll move like the whole model, which is not what we want. Okay. Let's see here. We'll probably have these type of windows in our office slash mudroom closet. Maybe just to like a triple here. Mm, those are too far. And then another triple one of these there. Hmm. I think those windows aren't jiving actually. That's one that one's fighting with those. Stone wrap on the garage bump out. Jeff asks. Yeah. I love that ugly ugly. <laughs> Or maybe even we could do a big block, maybe? All right, let's get this window over here. Do these all need to be narrower? That does feel a little bit better proportionally to the other windows.
Yeah. Or maybe this face is like our block. And then we do like a black brick on the bump out. I'm just freestyling here now. Oh, you know what I need to do first though, is color my eaves, so. I'm almost always doing black eaves. I think it just makes these pop so much, so much better. Maybe that's black trim on the roof there. Uh, let's get some roofing on here though. You know, that would be probably a lot darker. Roofing. Metal on the sky. Is that one? Like a copperish. overhang some oh that one's gonna be hard to do because it's embedded in that all right we'll do that now because we got seven minutes left not gonna tinker with that right now let's see here front porch should be concrete and then our front door double door maybe I need some wood to like brighten this up too man this porch what is going on here There we go. Okay. All right. That's better. Too big, huh? Now those look too small. Then let's see here. Some columns. I feel like this one's close. Really close. Just need to connect the dots more. Maybe I'll do follow up with another like live session or something on it. 
or post an update once I get some ideas on it. Almost, almost. Digging the floor plan, though. I think there's a lot of cool stuff going on with that one. Let's see here. All that would be our wood. And then this would be like a cast stone. Can we bring back the black bricks? too much. Should I just do more of the cast stone on that? Stone bases. Hmm. Yeah. Like I said, I want to play with this one some more. Really liking the direction, but I need to stomp out what's going on here in the front. There's something, something that we could do. Clean this up. But, all right, two minutes left. I think I'm going to call it a day with this one. Thank you for all those that were watching, following along. Appreciate it. Hope you have an awesome day. And I will catch you next time. Okay, bye.